Asking questions may sound like a fairly simple topic to discuss, but really it's the basis for a very powerful method for changing the way you think and the actions that follow from the thoughts that you have and therefore the results that you get. First of all, I'd like to talk about a real live example from a problem that was experienced a couple of years ago. It really is a good example of good decisions gone wrong. Next, I'd like to talk about what the importance of questions have toward your thinking and actions that people take. We'll then follow that with a look at a structure of thinking and then follow up with some categorization of questions that can be used to help you change your thinking and your actions. First, let's start with the story. On the north shore of Lake Superior, the winters are very long and consequently the ice will build up on the roadway. It's very difficult to clear that ice over the course of the long winter. The highway department often uses combinations of salt and chemicals, but those roads that go through thick forests that are heavily shaded do not melt very easily. So the question comes up, if shading is one of the problems, the engineers decided that one way to get more sun on the highway was to cut back the trees. This would help the sun then interact with the salt and, and help melt the ice. So they commissioned the power company to go in and cut the trees back 50 feet on either side of the roadway. Well, if you think about this, this is a reasonable solution to the question about how to help clear the roadway. But if you change the questions or add additional questions to what is the impact of this to the larger community, that changes the whole course of the solution. Well, what happened, you can imagine when the residents drove home that day and discovered that their beloved forest had been cut back 50 feet on either side of the roadway, they were quite upset. The supervisor on the project had to apologize to the community for not consulting first with local interests. He said, it's a challenge to balance the different perspectives up here, but we could have been more sensitive to people's concerns. This is an example of where the entity did not ask all of the questions it should have asked. It did not ask the right questions that were very important to many of the constituents up there. So the power of questions are very, very important as the questions really do uh, determine what kinds of actions that people go through. If you think of this, questions can even have an impact on civilization. Think back to the early hunter and gathering tribes that constantly roamed around in search of food and water. What question were they trying to answer? The basic questions of where can we go to find food. Now what happens when that question changes to how can we grow our own food? Suddenly they don't have to move around and they can settle into villages and cities. The industry changes from hunting and gathering into one of agriculture. So thus, by changing the questions, really can have an important impact on things as large as civilizations. What we're thinking about here is a term called question thinking. Think of it as a system for transforming your thoughts, your actions, and the results that you get. If you think about it, questions do drive the results. Think uh, carefully about all of the actions that you have taken today and you can probably come up with some questions that really drove the decision of what actions to take. Questions do drive results by working through the actions. So here's an example closer to home. When you're sitting in your courses, what actions would follow from these questions? If you ask yourself, how will I get a good grade in this class? Or what is the work required to pass this course? What kinds of actions would you take? Examples that have been given to me in the past for these questions were, I need to show up. I need to talk in class. I need to laugh at the instructor's jokes. That sort of thing students have responded as the actions that they would take if these were the questions driving their thinking. But what if we change these questions to, what can I learn from this class? Or how does this information relate to other knowledge? Then the types of things that students respond to say, well, I, would, might, I might do some extra reading for the course. I might talk to some other experts in this area. I might talk to other people from other disciplines and find out how this information connects to their knowledge. 
So these are drastically different actions based on asking different questions. One of the things in order to be able to control the questions you ask is first you have to be able to ob observe the questions that are driving your actions. You can categorize your questions into two types, judging questions or learning questions. And there are definite differences in the way that you would act based on this. So an example of judging questions. Someone might say in a work group, why isn't this done yet? Someone might also respond to a decision that was made previously into what were they thinking? You can see that there is a hidden judgment behind each of these questions and you might think that they might have a negative connotation. Whereas you could think of this situation and use learning questions in the sense that you could say, how can I help finish this project? Or what does this decision mean to them? Those two things push the, uh, the realm of actions and the type of thinking into a different arena that probably is more positive. The kinds of thinking again. Are your questions seeking the facts? For example, is there additional data that we've overlooked? Or are you advocating for personal preferences? Such as, isn't this a bad idea? Two types of questions that can come up in project situations. One is really looking for development and the other is really advocating a position. Again, you can think of the former as a learning question and the latter one as a judging question. What are the consequences of having these two perspectives? Well, generally learning questions will energize people, stimulate creativity and increase productivity. Judging questions tend to drain energy, close minds, and create roadblocks. Very negative consequences for these. So you can see that the questions have a lot of power to drive your thinking forward. If you're just going for answers, answers usually stop the thought process unless, of course, they would trigger you to ask further questions, but answers usually are dead ends. One of the things I'd like you to consider is that intellectual excellence is based on formulating good questions. Two types of questions you can think about, simple ones. These are questions that can easily be answered by definitions. These are generally not the kinds of questions that drive intellectual excellence, but complex questions do. And these are questions that do not have simple definitions that you can look up. These types of questions are answered through argumentation and negotiation. So let's consider a model of thinking. This model shows eight steps in a structured thinking process. The first step, we generally tend to think for a purpose or a goal. The questions that would be pertinent to this part of the thinking process would be, what is the purpose of this? What are we trying to accomplish? The second step is we think for a purpose or goal, but it comes from a particular point of view. Very important. These questions are often overlooked in committee work or teamwork. You would, in this instance, want to ask, what is our view of this? What is their view of this? Is there another way at looking at this situation? The third step coming from a point of view would be that your point of view is often based on assumptions that you take for granted. Important questions to ask yourself and the team in this situation are what are we taking for granted here? Why are we assuming that? Whatever. Are our assumptions correct? That leads us to the fourth step in that based on our assumptions that we would start thinking in a certain way that would lead to certain implications or consequences. In other words, this kind of leads to certain types of solutions and precludes other solutions. Other things you would want to ask is that this structured decision process, we use data, facts, and experiences. The questions that would be helpful in this stage would be, what evidence do we have to support our comments? And have we missed any information? Thus, we move on to the next step, which would be, we tend to make inferences and judgments based on the data and the facts that we have identified. Questions that would be important here. How did we reach that conclusion? Is there another conclusion that we could reach? We then move on to the seventh step, which would be that 
Our conclusions are based on concepts and theories. Often these are implicit. We do, are not aware of them, but we have certain beliefs, certain concepts and theories that we latch onto. Questions to try to bring those to light would be, what is the main idea underlying our judgment? Are we using the appropriate concepts? What if we use rival theories to challenge our thinking at this stage? And then finally, in the last stage, we are heading to answer a question or a problem. It's a very good idea at this point not to think that you have reached the answer, but then to revisit exactly what was the question we were trying to answer. Is it still an important question? And triggering further questions, what other questions might be important to this process. So you can see that these eight stages do formalize sort of a structure of thinking and decision making that we think for a purpose from a point of view based on our assumptions that lead to certain consequences. We use data facts and experiences to make inferences and judgments based on implicit concepts and theories to answer a question or solve a problem. Now Dan Rome in his book, uh, Back of the Napkin, has identified six categories of questions and I think these are helpful because very often you will ask people to come up with good questions but that, that really is a challenge to do that. How do you come up with good questions? What are the right questions to ask? What are important questions? So these are ways of looking at problems whereby you can come up with questions based on these categories that would help you start to formulate your questions. If you are looking at challenges or problems that relate to people or things, you would be asking who or what types of questions. Questions that relate to measuring or counting would be how much questions. Challenges that are relating to scheduling or timing issues, you would of course ask when questions. Challenges relating to directions, or fit, or causal, you might talk about where questions. How questions would relate to how things influence others. And then the why questions would be challenges relating to are we doing the right thing, why are we doing this, is the best solution, and so forth. So these categories might help you as you're listening to information or reading information to decide what types of questions you could put together. The important thing is to think about asking questions to, to push you into more intellectually, uh, more meaningful areas. Simply reading and or listening to lectures is very easy. Thinking deeply about what you read or hear is very hard. Formulating good questions leads you to think more deeply about what you read or hear and thus you think more, uh, in, you become more intellectual and, and more challenging in what you are listening to.